Uh, hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, happy Wednesday to you. Uh, hopefully you're staying dry this morning. Um, as uh, we look at uh, all the rain that's coming down outside, uh, hopefully you're inside today and not having to work out in that garbage. But uh, either way, we're hoping having hope you're having a good day. Uh, wanted to just uh, give a shout out to our team last night that helped with our uh, recovery group uh, launch here at Lake Eustis. Uh, uh, we've got a ministry that we launched last night called uh, Come to Believe. Uh, those who are wrestling with some kind of uh, addiction stronghold in their life that God would set them free from that and uh, so, so had a great night last night um, Chris and, and Shannon Harris and uh, our team of people that helped facilitate that last night just did a, a phenomenal job appreciate them and their leadership and um, all that the Lord is going to do through that ministry and for our community and so um, love to have you come and join us next Tuesday. That's to be every Tuesday night, Tuesday, or at six thirty in the evening, um, here at our church building downstairs in the Fellowship Hall. So, uh, a lot of good stuff there. Um, uh, just want to remind you also, things are coming together for our back to school event that we have coming up in the end of the month, uh, July thirty first, where we're going to be going and serving and uh, encouraging the people in the community of Paisley, a uh, community about twenty five minutes to our northeast um, and uh, just going to come alongside of the people there and uh, supply them with school supplies and uh, haircuts and uh, all the different things, uh, sports, physicals, uh, a lot of food, bounce houses, a lot of fun we're going to have that day, just encouraging the people, loving on them, uh, blessing them. So if you're interested in helping, a couple different ways you can help. One is you can donate. We got to get a ton of school supplies. Uh, so we're going to need uh, all kind of pencils and paper and markers and composition notebooks and three prong folders and just all kind of stuff. The, the safety scissors things, glue sticks, uh, you name it, we're going to need it. So we've got a list on our website. There's a list on our app as well. If you are um, if you're watching this online, uh, you can head over to our website or look at the uh, app. Uh, Lake Eustis Christian app and we'll get you all the different information that you need for supplies that we need. So please, please, please donate. You can also volunteer and help uh, that day. We've got a sign up sheet here at the church. You can call or email the church office and we'll get you signed up or you can sign up on a Sunday morning as well. So uh, a lot of stuff happening and our goal and our aim is to build relationships with the people in Paisley so that we can have a platform then to share the gospel with them and to love on them, so which is a good thing. Um, but today we're back in the book of Matthew. We've been walking through Matthew's gospel, his record of Jesus's ministry and his account for how to live within the kingdom of God. That's what we're looking at in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 here especially. And uh, we're in chapter 6 now. And we're going to start in verse 16 this morning. I'm going to read just a couple of verses and, and just make a couple of comments on this. And then we're going to get to the next section. And it, it starts in verse 19. But Jesus writes, or not Jesus writes, Jesus says, and then Matthew writes it for us. He says, when you fast, uh, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put on oil, put oil on your head and wash your face uh, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen and your father who is, uh, sees what is done in secret will reward you. This kind of carries that same theme that we started earlier in this chapter where Jesus says, listen, when you, when you pray, don't, don't do it out in, in the synagogue and in the public sphere. Uh, not saying that we can't pray in public. Not saying that we shouldn't fast and people know about it or find out about it, but he's saying, what is your motive in it? Uh, don't have a motive that is self-seeking. Uh, don't have a motive that is all about how good you are and how awesome you are and what you have to offer and all that kind of stuff, right? Don't don't pray in that way. Don't give your money in that way, Jesus says, and certainly don't fast in that way. So fasting was a spiritual discipline that we still practice today. Uh, maybe not as prevalent, but the Jews did this often. Um, they would fast. Uh, fasting would mean normally you're giving up something. 
so typically people would fast a meal or they fast meals uh, during the day uh, and during that time that they normally would have spent uh, eating they would spend that time praying uh, that when a hunger pain hits you uh, when you got uh, when your stomach began to growl right because you're hungry physically it reminds you of the spiritual condition to need that we need to pray right so it was used as a prayer mechanism uh, a good thing to do but some people were doing that in such a way that they were making themselves look like oh look how spiritual I am because I've given up food for this day or I've given up whatever for this day and they're trying to make it about themselves and Jesus is saying listen that can't be our posture our posture has to be in humility and if we're gonna fast don't go around and brag about it don't go around and and, and highlight your own life if you're gonna fast fast that's a great thing to do uh, spend that time in prayer really seek the Lord in those times but don't do it in such a way that you have to post it on Facebook don't I, w I wouldn't put that out there saying hey just to let you know uh, I'm fasting today because I'm really seeking the Lord if you're gonna do that go ahead and do it but don't post it you don't need to announce to the world why we are doing the spiritual disciplines that we that we have in our life. So that's kind of the thing. And Jesus echoes that very same thing he told the people about praying and about giving money. He says, what you do in secret, your father will reward. Um, but if you do it in the public eye, if you do it to get the attention of people, you might get their attention, you might get their applause, you might get the accolades, but Jesus says that's all you'll get. You'll get nothing from the, our father in heaven. So good reminder for us. Verse 19, a uh, really popular passage uh, in, in Matthew's Gospel. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Uh, I love this text. Uh, so much to say here about this text. I'm just going to say a couple things about it. One of the things that I think is important that you um, that we have to look at is Jesus is recognizing there's two distinct areas uh, of value in our life. Uh, there are those things that we value on earth, and there are the things that we value in heaven. Um, those are the two areas that we concern ourselves with. The things of earth, which we're where we're at right now, and the things of heaven that we know are eternal and are futuristic in that sense. And so Jesus' caution to us is let's not get caught up with so much on earth that we forget our end goal. Because our our end goal is not earth. God's primary objective for us is not that we be comfortable or we be self-sufficient on earth. God's ultimate goal is that we be righteous in glory with him. Um, that is his ultimate goal. And so we have to organize our life. We have to prioritize those things in our life to match that. That if God is our priority, if heaven is our prize, if that is the end goal, then everything we do on earth should point toward that. And the problem is things like acquiring things on earth, uh, accumulating possessions, those things don't matter in the end, right? They might be comfortable and nice right now, but they don't matter in the end, at the end of our life. And so he says uh, something really interesting here in this verse. He says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, right? What you treasure, what is valuable to you, your heart's going to follow that, right? If you, if you're, if, I don't know, if money is valuable to you, if that is the object of your passion and your desire, your heart's going to follow that. It means your decisions and the things you do in life are going to follow your treasure. The same thing is true as if you treasure and if, and if you hold a relationship with Jesus to be most valuable, if you hold your seat in heaven to be most valuable, uh, then you begin to live differently, right? Your, your heart will follow that. Let me ask you, or just have you consider this as well. The things that Jesus is contrasting here are things that are temporary and things that are eternal. Things of earth are temporary, right? They, they fade away, they get destroyed by the elements. Um, 
but things in glory, things in heaven are eternal. They will never perish. They will never, never spoil or fade. Um, so when we think about investing, right, when we talk about having uh, our treasure where, where, where it's important, uh, treasuring things that are eternal, valuing things that are eternal, the only thing that is eternal on this earth, that, that is on the earth right now, the only thing that's eternal are people, right? Um, your house is not going to heaven. Your car and your boat and your fishing poles, I'm talking to myself here, uh, they're not going to heaven, right? They are not going to be in glory. Now, I hope I hope they're already sufficient in heaven. That'd be awesome. Um, but that's not what's going to heaven. The only thing on this earth that is eternal is people. Um, not going to get into a debate of do dogs go to heaven and all that stuff. But people, we know, will be in glory. Um, so if our treasure is heaven, if our treasure and our value system is based on glory, then shouldn't we invest in things that are eternal? And that means that we should invest in people. We need to invest in relationships. We need to invest in our neighbors. We need to invest in those people that we work with and the people that we go to school with. Uh, that should be the things that we treasure. So I just want to encourage you in that to think differently about those things. Are you investing in the things that are eternal rather than the things that are temporary? What is your value system? What do you treasure? Because I guarantee, as Jesus says, whatever you treasure, whatever is most valuable, your heart will follow. Let's pray. God, thank you for uh, the insight we find in the scripture. Thank you for showing us grace and mercy in all things. We thank you for the favor that we have in life, God. You have blessed us so richly. We pray, God, your blessing over our day. Uh, pray that you be with people in the path of the storm, that um, even though it doesn't seem too bad, we recognize there's always the potential for danger, and so we ask your, your protection uh, over uh, our communities. We uh, look forward to being back together in your word tomorrow, God. So bless us, use us, and I pray that we might make a difference in other people's lives. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, have a good night and or a good afternoon, and stay dry. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless.